This is the Generation Report. As you might have noticed, a lot of news and public reaction has been generated by President Biden's statements recently, including comments he made about a new world order last week. I'm going to address a few points concerning these comments and the reaction to unfolding events in general. First, I do not believe that President Biden was making a reference to Strauss and Howe's The Fourth Turning when he spoke of a coming new world order. If I had to guess whether the president has read the book or not, I'd say he hasn't. The belief that he has, or that someone advising him has, is based on the perception that talk about history repeating itself or major historical changes recurring every four generations originated with the fourth turning. That perception is not accurate. These ideas go back thousands of years, they transcend the study of history, and at their core are four basic notions. One, people continually sense the changes happening in their social environment. Two, societies do experience a certain degree of historical recurrence. Three, people can connect events happening around them to other events of a similar nature in the past. And four, generations are formed and identified according to their common historical experiences. The fourth turning's contribution was combining these insights and applying them to American history to show how the patterns of historical recurrence and generational change are linked. I can attest that the book has a large and diverse following, but I can also say with confidence that a significant number of the book's greatest skeptics view history the same way President Biden often talks about it, as a trail of imperfections and wrongs that need to be transcended. That, on its own, makes me doubt he would ever reference the fourth turning publicly. And to emphasize once again, the basic idea of measuring historical recurrence in terms of generations not only transcends American history, but it also predates the Bible. Second, this latest spike of interest in the fourth turning has been significant, but it has mostly been confined to chatter on social media and commentary by non-mainstream media voices. Contrasted against the mainstream media reactions to the invasion of Ukraine and to President Biden's recent statements, I believe this shows that discussions about history are reaching a tipping point. From what I've been able to determine, the analogies between the Ukraine crisis and World War II began after President Biden made comments comparing the two on January 19th. There can be little doubt that since that day, and especially since February 23rd, almost every major media outlet, foreign policy publication, and popular historian has at some point invoked World War II or the post-World War II order to give context to the current crisis. Everyone can sense that major changes of the likes we have not seen in a long time are happening right now and that more are coming. And yet, I have seen only one mainstream media outlet discuss the fourth turning in an effort to contextualize current events. The Minneapolis Star Tribune, in a recent column that described the book as, and I quote, irreducibly odd. Now would seem to be the ideal time for the fourth turning's insights to be seriously considered by a wide range of mainstream outlets and voices. That is not happening, and it is not going to happen. Instead, many will simply continue to beat the drums declaring democracy is under threat and the global order is in jeopardy, frantically making analogies to history like a wayward torpedo in the water searching for a target. To summarize, I believe we are about to see unanimity of mainstream thought and expression about history, unlike anything we have ever seen. Third, if that school of thought and expression about history should succeed in drowning out other points of view, it will reduce history down to battles between the forces of light and dark, between democracy and autocracy, between good and evil, wherever possible. I see President Biden as someone who embodies that point of view. The new world order of which President Biden spoke last week is less a tangible framework of the likes which emerged after World War II than it is an intangible moment when the realization dawns on the enemies of democracy that they are on the wrong side of history. At no point does the fourth turning frame history in these terms. Fourth and finally, I anticipate that in the not-too-distant future, fourth turning will be assigned the status of a conspiracy term by the social media gatekeepers and by the mainstream media as well. You heard it here first. In closing, I recommend that anyone interested in Strauss and Howe's insights pick up a copy of The Fourth Turning and read it if they haven't yet. Speaking for myself, I have a busy slate of podcasts in various stages of development to be released this spring, and I'm beginning to draft ideas for a book. Stay tuned. The world is moving towards something new, and I hope it's not World War III. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy this series, please like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and share both with as many people as you can. I'm Paul Zemi Finn. May God bless America.